you need to, I believe, separate the fisheries services conservation duties from their commercial mandates. That's one of the biggest problems because what Westpac does is they make recommendations. The fishery service really has the responsibility of making the final decision, but usually their final decision will follow what Westpac says. And that's because the commercial interests within the, uh, the fishery service are the ones with the political power. So you need to have a separate agency that is responsible for enforcing the conservation side of fisheries management. You know, ultimately, the consumers have a lot of power in determining which way these fisheries go. How you spend your food dollar ultimately counts for a, a great deal. If you don't buy swordfish, for example, then sword fishing isn't going to continue. Good reasons to avoid buying swordfish include, number one, it's not good for you. It has high levels of mercury in it. And then of course there are environmental reasons not to eat swordfish because you're subsidizing an industry that is responsible for driving sea turtles, albatross to extinction uh, and other species. We finally have gotten confirmation from the scientific community, and this was published in an NSF study, that we have reached the point on the planet where we've taken more than the Earth can give back. We're taking too much. And when you take too much, then you end up losing. Exactly how much are we losing? What effect does the disappearance of a species have on the rest of its ecosystem? If we look back through history, we will find that extinctions of various species occurred long before humans set foot on the Earth. that extinctions are an integral part of evolution, increasing biodiversity by making room for the development of more successful species. So does it really matter in the long term if a few species of Hawaii's marine life disappear? Why should I care about a, a species? Because, you know, what's the big deal if you lose a species? And, and the analogy I like to use is, is think of your computer. Because people, you may not understand how a computer works, but most of us realize it's a pretty complicated thing and it's made up of all these different parts. Well, if I randomly open up the back of your computer and remove one of those parts, which is the same thing as if we completely remove all of one type of organism from a coral reef, the computer may or may not work. It depends upon the type of part I pick. And it's the same thing with the reef. When we, when we remove organisms from a reef, they no longer function as a natural, pristine reef. They function differently. And if we remove certain key parts from our computer, just as if we remove certain key species from a reef, then we see a dramatic change in the function of those reefs. And those species, there's a name for that. We call them keystone species because as an organism goes, they actually play a, a dominant role in structuring a section of, of an ecosystem. The Pacific Gregory is one such species. These tiny fish actually cultivate beds of filamentous algae. They will defend their small crops against fish many times their own size, like this band of grazing convict tangs. Tests have shown 
that when there is an absence of the Pacific Gregory, the algae that they tend becomes overgrazed by herbivores and eventually disappears. With their food source gone, these grazing herbivorous reef fish also disappear from the reef along with the predators that hunt them. Thus the entire ecosystem of the reef becomes unbalanced by the disappearance of one drab little fish. So if one small fish could have such an influence on its ecosystem, then we need to know how many of these keystone species there are, and if any of them are in danger of becoming extinct. Seventy percent of the planet's surface is made up of water, and 97 percent of this water is found in the ocean. With an average depth of two miles, exactly how many keystone species exist, we have really no idea. percent of the ocean remains unexplored. It is estimated that it contains 90% of all life on Earth. We still don't know exactly how all these individual species influence their environment. We do know, however, that the ocean is the key regulator of global climate that it supplies the planet with all the necessities of life, from the water we drink to the air we breathe. We know that the tiny single-celled plants floating on the surface of the ocean produce more oxygen than all the forests of the world combined. Our very existence is completely dependent on the health of the ocean. We're causing irrevocable damage to this delicate balance and changing the nature of life, not only in Hawaii, but throughout the world's oceans. The loss of keystone species from the ocean could have a devastating effect on the future of all species, including our own.